All right. Well, <clears throat> welcome, everybody. I mean, as Alex mentioned, my name is Ray Pake, and I'm from uh, a Cube Dev, and I have my Twitter handle there. So if you want to continue our conversation, even after our talk, uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to me. And a little bit more about myself, uh, just wanted to give you, uh, share my background. Uh, I probably got involved in open source community management uh, full-time, probably around like a 2014 when I uh, joined the Linux Foundation. And I worked at the LF for about four years. Uh, was involved in uh, several uh, projects in the networking industry. In 2018, I had an opportunity to join the community relations team at GitLab. Um, and as you know, I mean, GitLab is an open source project that started about, I mean, 10 years ago, I think they celebrated their first commit uh, to the repo uh, uh, sometime in like October, November timeframe, celebrating the 10 years. And I mean, they had this a huge ethos. I mean, they still do of uh, working with community, uh, working with community contributors. And it, it was exciting to be part of the continued growth. I mean, I mean several thousand people over the history of the project contributing to the software and the community in general. Uh, in late 2020, I joined my current uh, community and, and company called Cube. Uh, you're probably not as familiar with Cube as, as you are with the LF or, or GitLab, but we're in the uh, data analytics business intelligence space. We provide a platform where we make it easy for developers to access data from all your uh, modern data sources and have those data readily available for the dashboards you're creating or other applications. So if you're uh, interested in this space, uh, do check us out. Um, so what I'll talk about today, uh, you know, first of all, why recognitions are important uh, in open source uh, and also in general, uh, but some of the typical recognitions that, that we were used to seeing or we still uh, see, I mean, to this day, uh, but some of the challenges they, they present, I mean, I assume you're all here because you're passionate about diversity and inclusion like I am. Uh, but I think we could do a better job of, I mean, recognitions in and of itself aren't going to solve the, the challenges that we're having in diversity and inclusion. But you know, what are some of the things that we can do to, to have a, to create a more, foster a more welcoming and inclusive community um so and i'll try to make sure that we have up you know about 10 minutes or so for q a uh so feel free to queue up your questions and happy to discuss them with you uh before we uh adjourn the session so why are recognitions important and i i think of like typically think of three things i mean I mean, first one's like a little obvious. It's obviously to thank people for for great job that people have done, whether it's you know solving a bug, uh, res resolving a technical debt that we've been carrying for a while, or even things like you know making new people feel welcome and helping them sort of onboard things and pointing them to some some of the onboarding resources or answering you know questions uh, so that people can get started. Um, and and the second. <clears throat> reason why recognitions are important. I think all the open source community, whether you, you have this formalized or not, I mean, you have these set of values or ethos that you aspire to. I mean, you know, uh, for example, being helpful and welcoming to everybody who joins the community, et cetera, et cetera, you, you'll probably have that written, you know, some have written down as, as sort of a mission statement or maybe even reflected in your code of conduct, but you have sort of set of values that, that we, everyone wants to aspire to. And when somebody does a great job of sort of demonstrating or exemplifying those values, you want to, you know, highlight those people uh, as as role models that we all want to aspire to. Hey, here's a person who, you know, really helped uh, with the onboarding process in our community, for example. And it's a good way to sort of highlight uh, uh, those role models. And also, you know, the third thing I, that I, I point out here is, is, you know, it's a good way to sort of celebrate like your successes in the community by sort of highlighting uh, great work that's been done, whether it's technical or community focused. And uh, I mean, we're even before the pandemic, I think in people in open source uh, are used to working sort of asynchronously in different geographic locations. Um, and so even if it's virtual, by, by doing just group celebration, it, it helps bring people together. 
Um, so, I mean, these are the three important reasons why I think recognitions are important, not just in open source, but, you know, any, any group of people uh, you have. Uh, but in open source communities, you know, what do we typically see? Uh, I mean, I have a couple of examples here. And then when I present some examples that are not so great, I mean, this is, you know, all learnings for me. This, these are some of the mistakes that I made that I went to share. This, I'm not... Uh, pointing a finger at other people or or different communities are uh, the mistake that are totally safe uh, that I've been a part of. Uh, so you'll you'll see like charts or or dashboards like this in in some communities. Uh, the the first one on the left and the top left is sort of hey here are people who had their patches merge over whatever period of time over the past twelve months, last quarter or last month, and you sort of list people. Hey Jane has you know had 230 PRs merge over you know a period of a year and 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 Sanjay had had like a 50 etc cetera, etc cetera. and 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 you'll 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 typically see this at events or or community reports or dashboards etc um, the one on the right I mean this is something that you typically see at a foundation based open source projects where you you have you know, sometimes dozens or even hundreds of companies involved or organizations involved in an open source project. Like, you know, however you define contribution, you sort of list, you know, here are the companies that have had like contributors to the project. I mean, whether it's contribution to the repo or, or discussions, et cetera, et cetera, and say, hey, this organization A had like 15 people, uh, organization B had, had seven, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you'll, you'll see these in like dashboards. Um, so what are some of the challenges with, with these? Uh, I mean, there are two main issues that I see here. It, the first one is with the, these dashboards and, and metrics have a tendency, tendency, tendency to focus mostly on code activities, code based activities. Uh, for example, in your repos, whether it's like a GitLab or GitHub report repository you have for your project, you just focus on activities around, uh, uh, the tool chain for your code. Uh, that's one because uh, you know you have it. You know when you do that, you have a tendency tendency to sort of ignore uh, contribution that happens outside of you where your code lives. Uh, the second challenge here is that there's a lot of emphasis on metrics or what can be quantified. Um, you know, I I think like we're mostly like a very data driven people, so we're kind of attracted to numbers and metrics. Uh, but the challenge is that the metrics in and of itself uh, doesn't give you the full context of the work that was done or or the value that these contributions have provided. Um, so those are the two main issues um, uh, that I see with, with these types of uh, dashboards or, or metrics. Um, so you know when you when you focus on on code and when you focus on numbers. Uh, the problem that, that you're facing nowadays is that, um, I mean, maybe 10 years ago, like when, when, you heard, when there was an open source community, it mostly attracted other developers. So the developers, like it's natural for, for the, their conversations or discussions to happen in a code repo. Um, so if, you know, if, if you did recognition may, mostly based around code, maybe it wasn't as much of an issue, uh, like I said, like a decade ago. However, when you go to open source communities today, a lot of discussions, uh, happen, uh, that involve non-developers and they're happening outside of your repositories. Uh, they're happening in platforms like Discord, uh, Slack or Mattermost or wherever your conversations take place. And there are people that are making great contributions to the community by, you know, participating and facilitating conversations. And I, I use an onboarding example earlier. When somebody new joins a community, they'll come on Slack or Discord and sort of introduce themselves. And there are people that are very experienced in the community that feel very passionate about, you know, making those people feel welcome and help them get started in the community uh, by pointing out to uh, onboarding resources or answering quick questions. And it's a valuable contribution that happens outside of the code uh, repository. Uh, the other contribution that I see a lot of, especially in my commu uh, current community, Cube, we have a lot of non-developers like data engineers or analysts uh, that are 
interested in participating in your community by sharing their use cases. Uh, this could be something formal, such as a blog post, like sharing, you know, how they're using our software in, at their company or in their industry. Or it could even be things like discussion, maybe it's on our forum, on, hey, we sort of implemented Q this way, then we realized that wasn't work, working for us, so we architected it this way, and here are the improvements we're seeing. And that's, you know, they, they want to like contribute those conversations or use cases to the community. Uh, and they're not as much as, as interested or, or, you know, have the expertise to contribute, you know, through code. So that's sort of, you know, that's the way they want to participate in the community. So if you're focused on solely or, or mostly on your code repositories, in effect, you're, what you're doing is you're sort of ignoring those other contributions. Uh, and the two, like the diagrams at the bottom of the slide, I mean, they're somewhat related. Uh, obviously, I've been in open source for a while, and I like most conversations and activities to happen um, in public uh, so that other people can participate and, and have visibility to them. But, you know, but you also have to be sensitive that some people because of the cultural reasons or background or even like people that are very experienced in open source I and mean, you'll see this when they first join the community uh i mean people all go through the imposter syndrome i mean i go through them whenever i change jobs or or change communities and they're just not as comfortable or confident about having discussions in public um so even like a posting something on slack and discourse could be uh you know, could be, you know, somewhat stressful, especially in the beginning. And they're just more comfortable having conversations with you, product managers or core engineers on a one-on-one -on -one basis to provide feedback on how they're using the, the software, what the challenges they're having, you know, feature requests that they may have. And you want to encourage them, you know, if they're not, you know, comfortable like, sharing their opinion in, in public for whatever reason, you want to give them an avenue to share their thoughts you know, on a one-on-one -on -one setting, you know, even if it's a, a quick uh, Zoom call with me or, or like I said, a product managers, other people in, in the community, you want to sort of encourage them to, you, you know, still have a conversation with you. And then if they make a valuable, provided valuable insight, you want to recognize them for, for, for speaking up, even if it's, you know, sort of in a one-on-one -on -one setting. And, you know, if it's appropriate, you know, highlight their contributions later on, uh, through recognitions if, if they're comfortable with that. So sort of flowing right along, uh, the other thing that I've been um, working on, in the, especially in the past couple of years, is that I'm seeing quite a few people in, in various communities that are just not very comfortable with public recognitions for, for whatever reason. Uh, I mean, I, I think a lot of us, including myself, made an assumption that like who wouldn't want to be in 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 the front of the room and getting applause from the rest of the community members but that's not everyone's like a cup of tea as as they say uh, they're just more comfortable with sort of pat on the back one-on-one -on -one in a one-on-one -on -one more private setting and you know i need to be respectful of that i mean i i you know i i sort of had to get over that myself where you know what if people just want to have a more private recognition and because my goal is to really thank that person for making whatever contributions they made it's you know it's it's you know if i can't if if all i do is you know conveying thanks and i can't like sort of put a spotlight on, on them or or you know uh or point to that person person as a role model you know i need to get over it if they're not comfortable with, with getting recognition in a public setting i need to be respectful of that um, the other recognitions that, you know, a lot of the communities are doing, including us, uh, and we, you know, we, we launched this program in GitLab as well. I mean, one of my colleagues said it's, you know, we wanted to recognize some of the top contributors from the community by sort of anointing them with, with titles like, like heroes is a title that that's used at both at GitLab and, and cube. Um, what I've learned is that. Uh, especially at Cube, like not everybody was very comfortable with the title. I was like somewhat taken aback when I approached a couple of community members and say, hey, we'd like to nominate you as a hero because of the contributions you made over, over the past, um, you know, uh, past, uh, past year or so. And uh, a couple of people actually sort of, um, uh, 
told me they're they're uncomfortable with with uh with being called a hero and they said something to the effect of you know i don't think what i've done is enough to to uh, to be worthy of a of a hero uh so i was like i said i was taken aback and i i need to really think about this uh and i reached out to a couple of my uh, former colleagues or managers uh, who are, you know, very active in diversity and inclusion uh, initiatives in various companies uh, to really sort of think about, you know, what what's going on here. Because, uh, I mean, like I said, I was like really taken aback, uh, you know, like who wouldn't want to be recognized and, 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 and an anointed a hero or ambassador, whatever the title is. Um, and so like these, you know, people I reached out to, they, um, uh, uh, one of the, both of what what several of them did was ask me a question of what's your main goal of of having a heroes program, uh, you know, is it to really is it recognition the main thing or what's your main uh, uh, main motivation? And my realization was that I mean it wasn't I mean recognition obviously is is part of it, but the big thing was I wanted to have a group of you know trusted community advisors and from the community that I can rely on for. Uh, for advice or feedback, uh, things like if you're making an important UI or significant UI changes to our product, or if we want to change the policies in the community uh, for our project, et cetera, et cetera. I, I want a group of people that I can sort of reach out to for uh, for uh, for advice and, and as a sounding board. Uh, so what number of people told me was that if that's sort of the main goal, then we need to we need to position this as more of an advisory group versus like we're putting a spotlight on those people and highlighting their contributions and, and you know, focusing on, on uh, solely on, on recognition. So, you know, what we did was we sort of did a repositioning of the HEROES program. I mean, I even thought about changing the title HEROES to something else, but, you know, we repositioned this more as, you know, here are a group of advisors um, that are continuing to contribute to the community so that we're giving people the avenue to help community grow and help improve the community and the product. Uh, so that's, you know, so we sort of did a, you know, repivoting of the HEROES program versus just, you know, having a focus mostly on recognition. Uh, so people don't feel comfortable because they feel like just, you know, we're just putting them under the spotlight and, and, um, and highlighting them as a role model. Uh, and, you know, I also have to remind myself, these, a lot of these people are contributing because they like the, I mean, that's just the process, uh, like I say here in the slide, but act of contributing. They're just, they're just like the act of contributing. And you know, I want to just provide them more opportunities to do that uh, as a hero versus, you know, highlighting their past work. Um, so, so what can what are some of the things that we can do to make recognition more inclusive? And I've talked about these like indirectly uh, a, few, a few times already. Obviously, we need to look beyond your code repository or where your code lives. Uh, and I can also point out that you know even you know when you look at the like a let's say a pull request in the repo, it doesn't tell you the whole story. I mean, if you talk to the contributor who submitted a PR and got it merged. You might find out that you know there are other people that help with their work, uh, whether it's through testing or you know providing ideas. That's not going to be apparent when you just look at the pull request through commit history or even comments. Uh, so we need to really even even the code contributions. You need to look beyond the code by having a conversation with the contributors. Um, the other thing, I mean, like I said, we're, we tend to be sort of data obsessed in general, and especially in, in, in technical uh, uh, communities. Uh, and I think we tend to overinvest in sort of, you know, uh, putting something into a metrics rather than trying to understand the, the, the uh, background of their contributions. Uh, one of the things I like to do is if I see a good contribution or somebody makes an interesting comment on on our Slack channel, is to have a coffee chat with them. I mean, so so these are virtual coffee chat, usually through Zoom or like a Google Hangout, and try to find out like you know what motivated them to make the contribution and what their experience was, and what you'll find out typically is that. Yeah, um, you know, they're actually looking for more ways to contribute because they, they're using the software for free in, in a lot of cases. 
and they somehow want to give back. Uh, so they're looking for more ways to sort of engage and connect with other community members. And so, you know, rather than, you know, uh, you know, focusing on, you know, who made like how many contributions, really find out what, you know, what was behind their contributions through conversations at coffee chats. And hopefully uh, when things get back to normal after, uh, after the pandemic, we can have these conversations at in the hallways at conferences, you know, like FOSS backstage. Um, so what are some of the other things uh, that we want to do for recognitions? Uh, I mean, the other problem with metrics, it tends to be sort of backward looking. So you might not recognize somebody's contributions until like weeks or even months later. So when you see something, you, even if it's a simple DM on, on Discord, just reach out to them and say thanks. And, you know, they'll appreciate the fact that, first of all, you noticed it. And two, you made a point of sort of reaching out. Um, so even a sim simple thank you will go a long way. And it's not about, it's it's always good to send a nice token and gesture through like a merchandise and swag. But, you know, people aren't doing, uh, you know, trying to help the community because of the merchandise that, they may potentially get. I mean, we like as community managers, we tend to obsess about the the type of swag and the logistics. But just like metrics, like at, at some point you reach a point of diminishing return. Um, uh, the other thing we want community members to participate in the process. I mean, one of the things that I did at the LF for our project OPNFE, uh, we let uh, you know we, we used to meet once a year at, at a summit. Um, and the highlight at the end was, you know, uh, 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 was uh, contributor recognitions. And we would also have uh, awards for top contributors. And this was done entirely through the input of the community, the nomination uh, process, the voting that was all done by community. All I did as a project staff member was to sort of administer the vote. I mean, that's all I did. So I think uh, when somebody got selected as a top community, a uh, top contributor, I think it was more meaningful because it was done through the input of uh, community members. Um, the other thing I want to point out, uh, we want to avoid giving the impression of like ranking like contributors. And I want to go back to slide five. Um, you know, even if your intention wasn't to rank people uh, through sort of metrics like these, people are going to see this almost like a ranking. And, and this is problematic, especially for the one on the right, uh, uh, where you're, you're trying to list um, how many contributions came from which companies. Large companies are going to have an advantage here because they just have more resources and people. And you definitely want to avoid giving the impression that somehow uh, you're trying to rank people for, for the volume of the work they've done. Um, so just to let me wrap up, I'm, I, I'm uh, slightly going long here. Um, you know, like I said, I try to remind myself uh, my main purpose for recognition is to make people, I mean, is to thank them and make them feel welcome. Uh, if I can't, you know, do the other two aspects of the recon, you know, two reasons for recognition on the, in the one of the earlier slide I showed in terms of celebration or or uh, highlighting role models you know i just need to get over it i want to make him feel comfortable and welcome and during the recognition process you know i want to form i want to use that as a way to sort of form a closer connection with that community member and and hopefully uh you know have that people more engaged make them feel appreciated and you know find an opportunity to have, have them connect with other community members um so uh and because i mean that's you know if i can thank people and allow them to form a closer bond with the rest of the community i mean that's what i need to look for uh look for uh so they feel included and and welcome in the community uh so i'll i'll stop here i i went slightly longer than i wanted to uh if people have any questions um uh alex i don't know if you got questions uh during the session but let me know um, yeah, yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, yeah. I think there are, isn't isn't a question right now, um, mm -hmm. but Brian commented that this was really inf insightful for him mm -hmm. and really helpful. So yeah. apparently you you struck a nerve there. Right. Um, maybe there there's a comment. Um, uh, Dustin writes uh, that um, 
a project I worked on at Mozilla had a contributor funnel where we wrote uh, the stuff down. It was helpful for other devs maintainers to know how to react and de-bias the process a little. It also had a long list of possible rewards from swag and recognition through network in networking introductions or help with their project. Yeah, that's a, yeah. a comment. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, I think one other examples of having communities involved, I, I think I forgot to mention it. Uh, what I've also tried in other communities and um, uh, is to have sort of a nomination, like, because obviously if you're working with hundreds of people, you're not going to know everything that's going on in different parts of the world. Uh, have community members like reach out to you and say, hey, I noticed somebody like in, in Japan, for example, like organized a meetup and did this wonderful job. Uh, you know, give them an avenue to to let you know so that, that you know, I mean, I, I tried like a Google Forms or, or, or like a very casual Slack conversation, have a sort of a nomination process for <laughs> highlighting what a great work somebody's done. So, 